Well, welcome as we continue our journey through the Word of God today. Today we're going to be starting our journey through the book of Titus. Now, Titus is an amazing book because it's a letter written from the Apostle Paul to Titus. Titus is kind of like uh, Timothy in, in some ways in that he is being raised up as a leader by the Apostle Paul. Uh, for a very specific purpose. Timothy spent a lot of his ministry time in the the town of Ephesus, which is modern day Turkey. Titus spent most of his ministry time on the island of Crete. Now, the kind of people that Timothy was leading in Ephesus were very different from the kind of people that Titus was leading on Crete. And so there had to be a different letter. And what I'm going to do today is kind of give us a bit of a background on the book of Titus. I'm going to be using my New King James Study Bible, which I, I, I love and refer people to all the time. And I'm going to be just talking about some of their talking points, if you like, about the book of Titus, because I think it's very important for us to understand the background of books of the Bible before we go and study them. We understand the, the context, so we're not just reading a verse. We, I don't know what that means. Uh, and so let me read some things to you from the New King James Study Bible. And then I'll just kind of add a little bit of my own flavor to it as we kind of go through this today. We're not actually going to be looking at any verses today. We're just going to be looking at an introduction to the book of Titus. So let me read to you. Point man, pinch hitter, clutch player, go getter. These terms describe a person who can be counted on, somebody who knows what to do and how to do it and works tirelessly to get it done. Titus was that kind of person. He had to be. Much of his work, like the Apostle Paul's, was dangerous, unpopular, difficult, and tiring. It involved traveling, introducing strangers to new ideas, constantly making new friends, consistently battling new enemies, and even deflecting threats on his life. The number of people who could share such a load was small. But the early church desperately needed them. Not just anyone could start and maintain a new church in a hostile world, yet Titus rose to the challenge. The believers in Crete lacked leadership and they were suffering as a result. False teachers taking advantage of the absence of sound doctrine. Judging from Paul's exhortations, the harmony and morales of the young congregation were disrupted. Paul relied on Titus to help them establish their leadership and make up other deficits. The struggles are repeated in every age and this letter is as relevant today as it was to Titus. And I think that's what I'm going to just pause there before we continue on. When you read books of the Bible and you think, well, how is that relevant to my life today? Solomon said, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> Whatever comes up today has come up before. Uh, people like to think of this as the worst generation, the most perverse generation. Oh, this is the, it's never been worse than now. Well, I, I would, I would. I would say you could probably say that the times of the Bible were actually probably worse, and particularly just after it, the Roman Empire and all the perversion that was going on there makes today's world look pretty tame, to be honest with you. I think a lot of people think that, you know, all the things that we see are just horrible. But when you study ancient Rome uh, and, and the debauchery and just the wickedness, I mean, it was another level. But there's always something for us to be able to gain from looking at the Word of God and saying, okay, what, what does that mean to me? What's that mean to my life? And I think the book of Titus is one of those books. Very, very relevant because what Paul was teaching Titus to deal with on the, on the island of Crete is very, very similar to what we have in our world today. Now, Paul wrote Titus sometime between his two Roman imprisonments, which means between AD 62 and AD 65. So it looks like he wrote it, 1 Timothy, then wrote Titus, and then wrote 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy being the very last book that he ever wrote. Now, where's Crete? Crete is a large island. It's about 160 miles long. It's 35 miles wide. It's in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, it's located about 100 miles southeast of Greece. Now, the, the, the Cretans, people from Crete, developed a very strong agriculture and trading economy. They had one of the best known business centers in the ancient world, and there was a lot of prosperity, but whenever you have a lot of prosperity, you have a lot of excess, and you have a lot of things where people do things they shouldn't be doing. Paul, I'll read, I'll continue to read to you. Paul may have planted a church on the island of Crete during a missionary trip after his first imprisonment in Rome, which ended about AD 62. 
When Paul departed from Crete, he left Titus behind to, quote unquote, from Titus 1 verse 5, set in order the things that were lacking in the church. Titus is mentioned numerous times in the New Testament as one of Paul's most trusted assistants. He was a Greek and he was converted by Paul in Galatians chapter 2, verse 3. Titus carried the letter that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. And then when he was at Corinth, Titus was entrusted with collecting funds from the new Corinthian church. Now, Titus is a very short letter. It's not, it's not long at all. In fact, the, t- the total book of, or letter, if you like, only has 46 verses in it, the entire thing. But it covers a range of topics that are highly applicable to the church today. I'll go on to read. It's a key New Testament book for church organization with its guidelines for elders, pastors, and other believers. Furthermore, it contains one of the clearest statements about God's grace in all of the New Testament. It explicates the significance of Christ's first and second coming, and this book contributes to our understanding of the work of the Holy Spirit in salvation and the Christian life. But it is known most for its practical instruction about the roles of men, women, and servants, and its instruction for dealing with false teaching. A church needs organization, sound doctrine, and good teaching to survive. And in this letter, Paul gives Titus a succinct overview on how to lead a church. So that's the theology behind what Paul's going to deal with in this letter, that you have to have order. You have to have organization in the church. You can't just not have it. Now, there's some common themes that run through this letter of Titus. So let me continue to read on. Whereas the letters to Timothy emphasize sound doctrine, The letter to Titus, remember he wrote two letters to Timothy, only one to Titus. The second letter to Titus emphasizes good works. There were influential people in the church who were motivated by personal interest and selfish gain. And in his letter, Paul exposes the way that this was affecting the doctrine. Now, what was it doing? It was affecting the doctrine of the church. And so Paul then goes on and urges Titus to make sure you be a champion of purity, of service, of kindness towards others. Paul reminds Titus that salvation is not based on our own works of our righteousness, but rather is the result of God's work of kindness and love toward us. We are unable to do good works in our disobedient and selfish state. Salvation in Christ frees us to do good works. Interesting. There's a lot about this. Frees us to do good works. And the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit is what enables us. In other words, you can't do the good works that God wants you to do unless you are regenerated and, 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 and cleansed by the Holy Spirit. God wants his people to devote themselves to doing good works. Older men, older women, young men, young women, servants should adorn the doctrine of our God and Savior in all things. In his letter, Paul exhorts the believers at Crete. What's an exhort? An exhortation is when you tell something you need to do this because it's the right thing to do. Not do it and you're going in trouble, but do it because it's the right thing to do. So he exhorts the believers in Crete to display the testimony of good works to outsiders. Show them that you are saved by what you're doing. What you're doing doesn't save you. It's not going to get you to heaven, but it is what God's called you to do after you've been saved is to do good works. While good works are a Christian duty, they are also a gift from God. So Titus, this letter to Titus introduces the concept that us actually being able to do good for other people is a gift that God gives us. It is a gift. Paul beautifully describes the Savior's redemptive work on our behalf. Jesus is the one who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. So this is, the, this is what the letter in Titus is going to teach us. It's going to teach us that works don't save us, but we are required to do good works after we are saved to show people what it means to be saved. And it's a gift because you don't have that in you. You don't want to help other people for eternity if your eternity hasn't been changed. Once it has been, then you want to help other people. So this is what the book of Titus is all about. 
And I would love to know what you observed just from that introduction. What what gets you most excited about this book that we're about to go through and, and unpack all of it? Just, just tell me that. I'm not going to share with you any observations today apart from the fact that one, one observation. There's a reason why Paul wrote letters to Titus and Timothy and that they are the only pastors that had a letter written to them that was then meant for the church. So it was like, I'm writing to you personally, but I want you, I want this to be known throughout all the churches. And the only letters that are like that, first and second Timothy, book of Titus. So Titus is a very special letter. Very, very special, very short, very special. And I'm excited to go through it with you. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to just unpack all the wonderful things that the the Holy Spirit was able to work through the Apostle Paul and impact Titus so that the church in Crete could grow and order and learn, Father, what it is that you wanted them to do. And I pray as we go through this book that we would learn what you want us to do. We'd understand the value of doing good works, that it's a gift to be able to do nice things for other people so that they can understand Jesus Christ and him crucified, so that their eternities can be impacted. Thank you for that. What a wonderful gift that is to us in Jesus' name. Amen.